Good morning everyone. Uh, it's first thing in the morning here in the Finch workshop and I thought I would take you through something that I've had a lot of questions about. In fact it was in my first course, the techniques of hand stitching. I didn't include it because there's obviously a lot of information in there. I didn't want to overwhelm people with stuff. So I thought I'd do a little side explanation of what or how I make the little all loops that you can see, the little finger loops. The benefit to using a finger loop versus just using the awl is once it's locked into your finger it's there consistently every single time at the exact same angle every time so other than the fact that it means that you can use your fingers easier for stitching you don't have to hold on to the awl because it's already holding on to you um, it keeps that consistency in the stitches and this really makes a difference not so much on the on the face side of the leather where you're stitching the seam but if you flip it over on the back if you're going through at very slightly different angles each and every time you'll well you tend to see kind of different length stitches and they're at different angles and it just it can look very 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 inconsistent so the idea of the finger loop is it solves that issue so I'm going to show you an example of what I'm talking about what I've done is I've stitched three seams here so you can see that and what I've used on the bottom one I've used a pricking iron okay a rather expensive pricking iron on the second one I've marked the surface with a extremely cheap eBay high-speed steel uh, don't even use it often enough, I forgot the name now stitching chisel and on the top one I've used this rather cheap stamped piece of uh, piece of crap here. This was two pounds. Uh, I think my other half uses it for cake decorating or something like that. I just threw it in for shits and giggles because when you have the all blade going through the same way every single time, you don't need the prick marks to dictate to the all what to do because it's doing its own thing. So you can tell me which is best at this point. Now the bottom one, you can see here, that's the pricking iron and that is actually 3.85 millimeters. So it's a slightly closer stitch which is gonna give it a bit more angle. So it's got an advantage in that sense. The second one was marked with the cheap little stitching chisel, as you can see. A slightly straighter stitch and the top one was marked with the, uh, the two pound, um, I've forgotten the name for it now. Uh, rotary marker or something I stitched no it's not a stitch marker I think it can be used in that sense but that's what made the top one okay and it's it marks every two millimeters so I just skipped a mark and it's uh, you've got a four mil stitch so those are the benefits and just to give you a comparison if you do want to stitch two millimeter stitches that's what it looks like so that is 12 stitches per inch and that's using an awl as well. Uh, if you are going to do something like that, make sure it's thin leather. Um, it's good for things like watch straps and small wallets. And don't cast as well. So, let's go through the making of the finger loop. Now, I've made a strip of leather here, 18 millimeters. I get that measurement from wrapping my little strip around my little finger where it's going to go. And it's up to the webbing of my finger. And I can still bend it. Okay, so that's 18 millimeters for me is as wide as it goes and I can still bend. So it's going to be different depending on the individual. I've cut the top. You don't have to have a little rounded uh, end there. You can, uh, you can just cut it square if you want to. And I've made a little hole there as you can see. About, I think it's about 2.5 millimeters. Oh, 2 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around my finger and it's not going to be tight uh, but it's not going to be loose either you want it to be fitted and about three quarters of, a, of an inch overlap I'm just going to mark it with my fingernail there or my thumbnail rather and then I'm just going to cut that okay so now we have our short little strip and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap it round the other way around so the 
end that I've just cut with no hole in it is going to wrap around first and then I'm going to overlap with the piece where I've already cut the hole. I'm going to hold it there, it's difficult to show you, but I'm now just going to get a scratch awl and I'm going to make a little mark very carefully going through the pre-made hole and now I've got a little mark at the top okay so that's how to do it so we're just going to overlap with the pre-made hole over the top mark it and I'm just gonna then carry on and make another hole so here we go our two holes ready to go I'm going to skive this strip a little bit you won't really see it so if you're interested in skiving, I have a course that's just come out, Techniques of the Blade, which will explain how to do that. But now I have a nice, accurate skive, and it just tapers down, that's what we're looking for, so that it makes it a little bit more comfortable. I've also used a 0.6 millimeter edger to take off the inside edge, just for comfort reasons. Now, the all that we're actually going to use is here and when an awl handle is made, the awl haft itself, it's usually made on a turning machine so a point goes in one side, a point goes in the other and it spins and you get the idea but it leaves that okay and that's usually on most awls what you're gonna see not every awl but most of them if there isn't like on this water awl you just drill a small pilot hole to get the same effect so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get a small screw this is a six millimeter head and it is 12 millimeters long. It just has to be small, it's, it's fine. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, on the skived end, push the screw in. I'm gonna have to twist it in a little bit. I hope I'm making sense at this point. I haven't had my coffee yet, so. You'll forgive me if I'm bumbling my way through. So here we go, like so, and I'm gonna overlap it all the way around. And it's gonna come out the back side of the original hole. I've gotta get this done in under 10 minutes <laughs> for uh, an Instagram live. So here we are so far. And I'm just going to start it off at the back of the awl. What I've done actually is, is screwed a screw in previous, so it's uh, already uh, got threads on the wood itself. And I'm just going to screw it in just so there's a little bit of resistance turning, but not a lot. I'm going to put my finger in. I have my clam set up here with a perfectly straight piece of leather with some pre-made marks from the most commonly used pricking iron. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the awl until it matches up with the prick mark. So I'm going to put it in the first one and it needs to come back very slightly. Go into the next one so it's a fresh hole and what I'm doing is I'm keeping my wrist relaxed. Okay, I'm just gonna stop you there. I'm keeping my wrist nice and relaxed, pushing it in, and that's perfect. So it matches up, so I have a neutral wrist, the all blade is going in, matching up perfectly with the most commonly used pricking iron. Now I'm gonna carefully take it off, hold on to the all haft, and use my finger and thumb to hold the top. I'm going to tighten that down nice and firmly. And what I like to do is just finish off with a little bit of super glue on the inside. And you can get a piece of craft foam or you can get a thin piece of, say, pigskin, which is often what I use, and just glue it over the top of the screw itself. And uh, you'll find it much more comfortable. And eventually it will start breaking in and get really comfortable. So that's the end of my 10 minutes. I managed to get it in. Uh, if you have any questions, just message me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you next time.